This is the Apple Watch Ultra, the first Apple Watch with a massive 49mm display. All new design, the fanciest features, and built for the rugged outdoors. But this watch costs $800. That's three times as pricey as your cheapest Apple Watch, and two times as pricey as their second most pricey Apple Watch. I've used this for a good two weeks now. Is it worth paying for basically an iPhone 14 for the smartwatch? Well, let's find out with a little review. The packaging for the Apple Watches change depending on what you buy. For the Ultra, you get packaging that screams adventure and the great outdoors. With mountains lining the interior of the packaging, out of the box you get a booklet outlining details about the Apple Watch Ultra, the Apple Watch Ultra itself, and the watch band you chose. And a braided Apple Watch cable charger that connects via USB Type-C. This is Apple's least customizable watch because it doesn't come in any other kind of color and material. Just this lightish gray titanium body with orange accents on the action button. And it has a cream colored ceramic underside. The type of bands that you can purchase with the Apple Watch Ultra is also limited between the Alpine Loop, Trail Loop, Ocean Band, and their different colors and sizes. The color I have on mine is the Alpine Loop in green. Beyond just sheer size, the Apple Watch Ultra does differ from the other Apple Watches in a bunch of different ways. The digital crown and side buttons have part of the body blocking them to prevent damaging them and accidental scrolling. It has two speakers for louder and clearer sound that can also be used as a loud siren in emergencies. Hopefully no one has to ever end up using that feature, but it does exist and it does get pretty loud. And if you needed to, it could also probably scare off someone who's trying to mug you. Not that I suggest you try doing that though. And this new action button is like a macro button. It can be set up to do different things. The Ultra touts 36 hours of usage between charges compared to the 24 hours of other Apple Watches, an action button that can be customized to do different things, IP6X dust resistance, EN13319 certification, a built-in depth gauge, is swim proof and has dual frequency GPS and has the largest Apple Watch display we've seen yet at 49 millimeters. This thing is fat. For reference, here's what my 44 millimeter Apple Watch Series 6 looks like next to it. It feels like a completely different device altogether. I'll be honest, I'm a pretty tall guy with some chunky wrists myself. And it looks fine on my wrist, but on someone with smaller wrists, it looks absolutely massive. So if you do have smaller wrists, I highly recommend you check it out in a store, slap it on your wrist, see how it looks before you make the decision, because you may or may not like the look with how big it can be. Also, the Apple Watch Ultra is cellular and GPS only. Normally, Apple Watches have an option for GPS or cellular and GPS, but for the Apple Watch Ultra, there is no GPS only model. You don't have to use it with a cellular carrier, but the function is built in by default and not an additional feature that you have to pay for. Honestly, when this watch was first shown, I thought to myself, this has got to be the ugliest looking Apple Watch out of the entire lineup. And after seeing it in person, I think that opinion has softened. I actually like how it looks. It looks more rugged and has bright orange accents to the action button and reminds me of the Pip-Boy from the Fallout games. But design-wise, it's growing on me. I think I like it. Most of the rugged type of watches available on the market aren't the most sleek or stylish. They're supposed to fit for their purpose. But the Ultra really does look better in person than in pictures. And when compared to those watches, I think it has a leg up in the design department. But the one thing that stands out about this Apple Watch compared to the other ones is its ruggedness and sheer size. With this on your wrist, people know you have the Apple Watch Ultra. All right, before we continue, I wanna talk about this video sponsor, Casetify. Casetify makes customizable phone cases that look good without compromising durability. For example, I chose this vending machine case because I like how it looked with the deep purple iPhone 14 Pro. They collab with a ton of different artists to bring endless choices for case designs. You can upload your own custom design to give your phone your own unique touch and add awesome features like MagSafe to their cases. Casetify also built in important protection features directly into their cases, like EcoShock protected cases, which provide better tension distribution and abrasion resistance across the entire case and in the edges. Okay, it sounds super durable and all, but will it actually protect my phone if it drops? I have my own personal iPhone 14 Pro right here. Using this case to fly ultra impact case that's up to 11 and a half feet drop proof and up to five times the military standard, meaning it's been drop tested 130 times and the EcoShock protection doesn't wear off, I'm gonna drop it out of my hands, up high in the sky, as far as my arms will reach me, onto solid concrete. I've already dropped it off of an eight foot ladder multiple times, and this is that same case, but how would the phone survive with this case on solid concrete from my own hands?
And as you can see, the phone is safe, snug, and doing just fine in the case to fly case. And there's no damage to be seen. So if you're interested in buying your next iPhone or any phone case, check out Casetify and use the link below or in the description to save 15% off your next phone case. Anyway, back to the video. So let's talk about user experience. On release day, I charged this thing to 100%, and then I wanted to see if it could survive the whole weekend. Apple did tout 36 hours of battery life, so I wanted to really see if that was the case. So I woke up on Saturday morning and slapped this Apple Watch on at 8.20 in the morning at 100%. My wife and I went out to run some errands for the day. I came home, took the dog out for a walk, and it was around 70% in the evening. After waking up the next morning at around 8.30, the Apple Watch was at 52%. So I decided to switch the watch face from this vibrant modular one to one with deeper blacks to see if it would affect battery life. And after 48 hours, the Apple Watch was at 15%. Now keep in mind, I had cellular on the entire time and only took the Apple Watch off during showers. The Apple Watch Ultra does have fantastic water resistance, but these bands still get wet and sticky, and I didn't want to be wearing a wet band for a few hours. That sounds like it would feel really gross. So for my own personal usage, it went over the 48 hour mark with some battery to spare. But just like phones, the battery life on this thing will vary depending on person to person and how they use it. But it definitely outlasted my previous Apple Watch by a long shot. I think the battery life I got out of this thing has been fantastic. I find it comfortable to wear during my day-to-day -day life. And the only issue I really had was actually with the Alpine band itself. It's really hard to put on and take off. I get that that's the point since it's supposed to be secure. So I'm just pointing out that this band might not be ideal as a daily driver watch band. Luckily, any band that fits 42, 44, and 45 millimeter Apple Watches will fit on the Ultra. And the reverse is true too. Any Apple Watch Ultra band works with any of the larger Apple Watches. So far, I've spoken about many of the positive features of the Apple Watch Ultra, but I did have some few pain points as well. Sleeping with the Apple Watch Ultra is a bit of a pain. Since it's so big, you notice it when you wake up randomly in the middle of the night, and then the massive display blinds you. While you can sleep with the thing on, ideally you should probably take it off because it makes it harder to find a comfortable spot with it strapped to one of your arms. I know there are some sleep related functions with the Apple Watch, but with this one, I think it's better off your wrist while you're sleeping. Also, the action button, as it's currently implemented, has some really useful features, but is also a bit limited. Currently, you can only set it up to do a few specific things or use a shortcut. While the Apple Watch does have dual speakers, it's still an Apple Watch, so it only allows you to use those speakers to do very specific things, such as speakerphone during phone calls, alarms, notifications, and the new siren features. While you can stream music off of the Apple Watch, it's only when Bluetooth devices like AirPods or headphones are connected, but you can't play music directly out of the speakers of the watch. But during calls, the speakers are louder than the single speaker on my Apple Watch Series 6. Now, there are a bunch of features that provide value to people who participate in more rugged sports, like scuba diving, mountain climbing, and hiking. And these features look genuinely useful. There's a depth gauge that lets you know how deep in water the watch is. There's dive computer compatibility coming soon. Waypoint navigation that allows you to know where you've been and the compass app that's been redesigned to use these waypoints and let you trace your steps in case you need to backtrack. Overall, I do see how these features are useful, but I don't really do these type of activities, so I can't comment on how valuable these features are. Anyone who does do these activities though, are these features useful? Leave it in the comments. Let's talk alternatives to the Apple Watch Ultra. When I think of alternatives to this device, I can only think of two different devices, other Apple Watches and sports specific watches. Let's start with the sports specific ones first. The Apple Watch Ultra and all of its marketing, packaging, and all of its new features is trying to capture a lot of the market of people who do some extreme or rugged activities like long hikes in the wilderness or scuba diving. And they might get some of these people who are new to these activities or are casual hobbyists. But I don't think the Apple Watch Ultra, at least right now, is the right solution for these people who are really into these hobbies and activities. Take for example, Garmin. They make a ton of different watches that are all catered to specific activities. They got smart watches, recreational watches, dive watches, and golfing watches. Each and every single one provides a ton of functionality related to those activities that the Apple Watch currently does not mimic. And maybe the Apple Watch Ultra lineup will eventually get there. And while that is coming soon, it's technically not here yet. But that being said, there is a big distinction between the Apple Watch Ultra and other sports focused watches. The Apple Watch Ultra is a smartwatch first with some nice sports features. While products like the Garmin watches 
are more sports watches first with some smartwatch features. It really depends on what you're prioritizing there. But when you compare the Apple Watch Ultra to the Apple Watch Series 8 or SE, then it gets a little weird. Most Apple Watch users, or at least most Apple Watch users I've seen or talked to, use their Apple Watch primarily as a device to feed them notifications, find where their phone is, and pick up the occasional call if their phone is not on them. And that's not hard to do with really any of the Apple Watches that Apple currently sells. They all have the new S8 chip and should perform very similarly. So when you look at the Apple Watch Ultra, what you're paying for in comparison to all the other Apple Watches is the additional features like the larger display, the dual speakers for higher decibel emergency signals, the titanium body, even better water resistance, and that sapphire front glass, which are all nice to have features. Sure, that is arguably true, but not absolute deal breakers if all you do are the things that I mentioned above, using it for notifications, checking your messages, and for fitness tracking. But then here's the other funny thing of where this product is priced. If you wanted a stainless steel Apple Watch Series 8 with cellular support, it actually costs very similar to the Apple Watch Ultra. It really shows how pricey Apple made their stainless steel Apple Watches. And at that point, if you're gonna have to decide between the nicer look of the stainless steel or the functionality and ruggedness of the Ultra, in that situation, I think I'd just go for the Ultra. So I guess this is where I come to a conclusion. The Apple Watch Ultra is a very, very nice addition to the Apple Watch lineup. It adds a ton of new features that benefit both the average Apple Watch buyer and people doing high intensity sports. But with how most people use their Apple Watch, they may see better value in the Apple Watch Series 8 or Apple Watch SE, which both cost way less than the Ultra. As for the Ultra, the biggest reasons I see people buying this is if they want an Apple Watch with more battery life, a bigger screen, and a more rugged body. If that's not you, there's still other options to choose from. The other Apple Watches aren't slouches either. But I can see the appeal of the Apple Watch Ultra. It's the most rugged, durable Apple Watch in the lineup. And maybe this will appeal to people who like the Apple Watch, but also work in fields or do activities that could absolutely destroy a regular Apple Watch. Like they work in construction or other manual labor intensive field, or they like to do rock climbing on the weekends. But I don't work in those fields and I'm not an extreme sports athlete. But if you are, if you work in those fields or do extreme sports, leave something in the comment section. Let me know if you think differently and that these do or do not benefit you. As for me, I think most people should stick to the Series 8 and SE. The Apple Watch Ultra is fantastic for the right person, but most Apple Watch users won't see significant benefits from using it unless that extra ruggedness, larger display, and longer battery life are features that they care the most about. And they can justify the larger, more premium price tag that comes along with it. Otherwise, for the vast majority of people, I say stick with the Apple Watch SE or Apple Watch Series 8. Anyway, what do you personally think? Are you an Apple Watch user? What do you think about the Apple Watch Ultra? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it for you? Or do you use smart sport watches? Does the Ultra grab your interest? Leave all that in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.